Back here on Busted Open, Dave LaGreca, Tommy Dreamer. Really pleased to have this next guest on, Tommy, for sure. Congratulations are in order. Amazing career with TNA and Impact Wrestling. And he is the Monster Abyss. Joins us right now. How are you, sir? And congratulations. I'm doing great, uh, great Dave. Man, uh, Tommy, how are you guys? We are wonderful. My favorite Monster Abyss. So I happy was, he's getting uh, this. Ordering my best of Dave LaGreca. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you get the simulcast, too, which, again, has a retail value of fourteen ninety nine. So, I mean, how does it feel? I mean, what was it like when you heard the news that you're going into the Hall of Fame? Oh, man, uh, God, it's, it's hard to describe it. Uh, you know, it was uh, uh, emotional, to say the least, you know. I mean, it's uh, uh, to me, it's a culmination of the last 17 years with TNA and Impact and uh, to kind of be recognized you know, by, by the company and by, by the wrestling world, you know, uh, is, you know, for, for my body of work over the last 17 years and so forth, it, it, uh, it's, it's a great feeling and it's, uh, um, you know, kind of surreal. I pinched myself. I didn't think it was ever going to happen and, uh, you know, it's happening. So I'm, I'm, I'm on top of the world about it. When you talk about someone, and, and everyone talks about Tommy Dreamer, the heart and soul of ECW, the heart and soul of professional wrestling, the heart and soul of Impact Wrestling is the Monster Abyss. I have uh, known him for quite some time, huge fan. Uh, and when you talk about somebody who has sacrificed his body to entertain the fans, uh, me and Eric Young and Bobby Roode, we were all boys with Abyss, and we, we traveled a lot together. And whenever EY would want to get on abyss and you talk about someone who he you know he has the scars to prove it but in, in how much abyss loves professional wrestling and another guy like myself who's out there working his butt off and still performing at a top level abyss got choke slammed off the top of the stage by the dudleys through a flaming table it's a it's a famous <laughs> famous clip and he hits that table, and Eric Young would be like, he loves the business so much. He got hit with such force, it knocked his mask off. And instead, he's also on fire. Instead of putting himself out, the first thing he does is grab his mask to make sure it's secured, and then he rolls to try to get out uh, of being on fire. That's how much he loves this business. I do. You know, it's funny about that, Tommy. Yes, sir. Is, is Bubba, you know, Bubba tried to talk me out of that all day long, believe it or not. <laughs> that was my idea, and Bubba was like, are you sure, bro? And I'm like, uh, yeah, you know, let's do it. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it, you know, Tommy, you bringing up that, the, you know, the, that time period, man, you, you nailed it, man. That was that was the best, you know, with, you know, with Eric and Bobby and, and JD and you, and, uh, you know, that uh, that was, you know, Running up and down the road with you guys was... was we had a lot of fun. Can you tell, uh, after that bump, can you tell the audience when you went to the doctor and your bruise, because I know the story, but, you know, can you tell yeah. the world what they said about what happened to you? When I went to the doctor about it, the, 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 the physician told me, the first thing he told me when he looked at it was that he had only seen a bruise like that on a human cadaver before. <laughs> On a dead person, um, it, it was literally it was as black as night from the middle of my back to the middle of my legs. Um, wow. It was it was without a doubt the the worst and the, the the worst bump I ever took. I mean, I I feel it to this day. I feel it every day when I get up, and I feel it when it's cold out. So, yeah, I mean, it's you know the one good thing is it's it's immortalized forever. It's been in every cold open. <laughs> since, since it happened, I think it was 2008, and you know, you know, obviously, Tommy, you could get this. I'm, you know, and I know Bubba would too, and Dave, I'm sure you do too. But I'm proud of it. You know, as stupid as it was, uh, <laughs> I'm proud of it. And uh, um, but God, it hurt. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, I went and in, in today's, I don't even want to say the modern era. I, my three favorite monsters in professional wrestling: The Undertaker, Kane, and Abyss. And for someone who never had that 
WWE exposure. And, and you know, when, when the announcement came from, from a simple social media tweet to be trending worldwide is how much the wrestling fans love and appreciate Abyss. And, and you know, I, I hold them right up there. I, you know, I hold them higher than Kamala. I, I hold them up higher than Mankind because in today's society for people to view him still as this monster mm -hmm. when he's performing that's that's the man behind the mask because he is a monster trust me i've wrestled him he has screamed at me sometimes like he wanted to murder me and i was like i'm sorry <laughs> plus it's my show stop yelling at me <laughs> <laughs> well i remember in 2010 having hulk hogan here in studio and i remember before the interview even started and he even said it on the air as well he said the one guy he absolutely loved on that TNA roster at that point was Abyss. And, you know, he really wanted to to take Abyss and run with him. And you guys made for some amazing television, I thought, on Spike at that time. I mean, what was it like for you at that time for somebody like Hulk Hogan, who people regard as, you know, the greatest ever, you know, having such an interest in what you were doing? You know, uh, that, that's, that's one of my... Uh uh personal crowning moments of of my career because you know this is Hulk Hogan we're talking about and um you know I got along with him great and, and he was great to the whole roster there and he was open and helped guys and you know helped guys with finishes and, and the way they did things and you know he, I was very fortunate he took a special liking to me and we really were close I mean we'd go to sushi go have sushi and you know, dinner and, and you know, I hang out with him and, and, and Jennifer. And, uh, we just got along so good, and he was so genuine and so uh, so just kind. You know, I, I got to know I got to know the Hulk, the Terry that uh, you know that, 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 that a lot of the world doesn't know. And I was very fortunate enough to to get to, to do that. And you know, I'll, I'll hold that dear always. You know, I'll always hold that dear to my heart. You know, he was he was uh, you know a guy that didn't have to reach out. Um, uh, to me, and he did. Uh, he, it was just a, you know, it was a, <clears throat> like I said, a bucket list moment. I mean, I, I was 10 years old watching this guy, and, you know, 15 years old and 20 years old, and then I got into the business in 95, and, you know, my, the last thing I ever thought in the world was I'd ever get to work with Hulk Hogan. I mean, that was, that was a pipe dream at that point. So when it came true, um, it was uh, literally to a, to a large extent a dream come true. Abyss, uh, who were your like? You know, everyone knows Dusty Rhodes was my guy. Who were who was your guy? Like, who you kind of wanted to pattern yourself after? And, and I know you played college football, and then you know you got into professional wrestling. So you know, tell your story, bro. Yeah, you know, uh, you know, I mean, it's like you know, I graduated from Ohio University, and I graduated with my master's degree. You know, in ninety three. You know, my my thing was I wanted to be the marketing guy. I wanted to be the VP of marketing for Titan Sports, man. I I, I had a relationship with Basil DeVito. Uh, I knew Jonathan Flora. I knew uh, uh, um, Eric Bechtold. I knew a lot of the front office guys because they were graduates of Ohio University, so I was able to network through them. So, you know, wrestling wasn't <clears throat> the, the number one goal at the time. I wanted to be the marketing guy, you know, and, and then, you know, I, I, I listened to this radio commercial one day at work in my suit and tie for this wrestling school up in Price Hill, Ohio. So I went up there on my lunch break and walked in the place, and it was an old beaten-down gym, and it looked like the walls were about to fall in. And, um, you know, I, I, I talked to the guy for a little bit, and he was Roger Ruffin, who was actually a, he owns Bone Crushers in Cincinnati, but he was a referee for the WWF in the 80s and early 90s a lot. So I recognized him right away. And, uh, I threw everything into it, man. Everything I had into it, man. I, I, uh, <clears throat> I always tell the story. It's kind of funny, but you know, my, my last year and, in, in, you know, when I graduated from OU, I, I worked at hockey. I was, uh, minor league hockey for the Atlanta Knights or the IHL. And then I moved up to Cincinnati for the Cincinnati Cyclones. And, you know, I, uh, <clears throat> I didn't think anything about wrestling at that time. You know, and then when I once I went up there, man, I just dove into it head first. I ended up getting fired from the, from the Cyclones, uh, and uh, I just dove in a hundred percent. You know, with this thing, I, my my W two for my last year in hockey was 
was very, very good, you know, and uh, my W-2 from the very first year, a year later in wrestling, was, was below poverty level. So, uh, you know, it's, uh, I, I definitely gambled, and, uh, and it paid off. You know, I put everything I had into it. I'm very proud of that. Um, you know, and I, I continued to wrestle uh, on the Indies from 95 to 2002 until Dutch Mantel came around and, uh, you know, went to Puerto Rico for the IWA for the year um, from 2002 to 2000, early 2003. And then, you know, came back and, uh, you know, Dutch hooked me up with Jeff. And Jeff gave me a tryout match in uh, July of 03, right before, right before the very first anniversary of TNA and hired me on the spot and uh was there ever since you know i mean 17 years later here i am and you know <clears throat> just an incredible ride you know just thinking about it you know since chills up my spine just of what a journey it's been and you know what a great journey it's been you know talk about your loyalty to tna and impact wrestling i know there's been a lot of ups and downs and it's probably been a bit of a roller coaster ride but Talk about your loyalty to that company. You know, and I think Tom, I know Tommy can 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 relate. You know, with the ECW thing, and but you know, Impact. You know, to me, it, it, it was, it is, and it was at its home. You know, it's 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 where I started. You know, I mean, it's it's I spent my entire, practically my entire adult life there. You know, I mean, uh, this this coming year, I'll I'll be you know fifty percent, almost half my life in the wrestling business, and uh, you know, Impact took a gamble on me when I was a nobody, and you know, I was coming out of Puerto Rico with a, with a decent name, but but nothing to where you know nobody really knew who I was stateside, and and TNA gave me that chance, you know, when uh, when nobody else was biting at the time, and and then you know to see the growth and be a part of the growth and. You know, I always tell people that that, that, that to me, that, that, that meant the most. That's one of the reasons I never wanted to leave was because, uh, you know, I was there since the beginning, man. You know, I was, I was a part of the original ground floor of that company, whether it was, you know, there, on those Wednesday night pay-per-views back in 02 and 03, we didn't know if there was going to be a next Wednesday or not. You know, we came every week not knowing, you know, what was going to be the, the future of the company in 2003. And a lot of people said we were going to close up the doors in six months. And they said that for about 12 years, you know. Yeah. So, so I, uh, you know, I just, to me, it, it's, it's, I'm so proud of what the company's done. And there's been a lot of ups and downs, no doubt. And they've been well documented. And, um, but, but for me, you know, it, it's, it's a great company. Um, you know, we, we've, we've struggled and we've, you know, really, uh, plowed through some, some obstacles along the way. And, uh, you know, to me, it, it's, uh, it's been, uh, you know, it's been, uh, it's been home and it's something I just could never see myself leaving, you know? So, uh, very, very, very proud of it. When um, uh, you think about all the different management changes that Impact Wrestling has had, I mean, we could think, I could probably lay, label five to six different ownerships, you know, who's in charge, to talk about how great of a talent Abyss is, he has been through all of them. Yeah. And never once did anyone say, man, I don't know if that guy's going to make the new and, and that's not, you know, when there's new management, uh, I don't care who you are, that on every team, baseball, football, man, they, they, we may have to cut you. He don't, you know, he doesn't follow our new system. Abyss has adapted to everybody's system because that's how super talented and, you know, behind the scenes, what he offers, He's uh, he helps produce matches and he is so into it. And I've watched him produce matches and he gets in this like, zone where he rocks back and forth when he's doing matches and like he claps his hands just like when he's wrestling and that is all passion and you know i, I honestly like and i said say there can never be another there can never be another iron sheik in wrestling there can never be another character or a monster like him because of social media but abyss just keeps on being abyss and that's you know it's it's such kudos to you and given i love abyss so much i hated joseph parks and he'd always be like 
dude, <laughs> what? why would you say that? Like, And I was just like, just because, like, why would they want to change it? And he got Joseph Parks over. It was, I, I love, He's phenomenal. I love Joseph Parks. You're an idiot. Piece, what? What are you talking about? It was fantastic. I love him. I, Joseph Parks excelled the best to me when him and JB did that stuff with Scott Steiner. And I was just like, I, I became a fan. And when you look at it, like I love Abyss so much as the the character, and then I view them as two totally different people. Just because, again, it's how into the character Abyss gets into. And were you nervous when they first approached you that with that? Oh man, Tommy, I was scared to death. <laughs> I was scared to death. Uh, in true story, we were in St. Louis for Sting versus Hulk at Lockdown, and. Uh, Eric came up to me and Eric Bischoff came up to me in the back and said, I have an idea for you. And I said, yeah, sure. But what is it, boss? And he laid it on me and I, I started looking around for the hidden cameras, man. I thought it was a joke. You know, I, I, I couldn't grasp it. I couldn't put my, my head around it at first, you know? So, um, but, but I got to credit, you know, Eric and, and I really got to credit Dave Lagana and Matt Conway. They really, really, really helped me developed it uh it was a really it was a strong collaboration between me and david and matt uh you know we really really you know wrapped our head around it and it was a great challenge man because you know it was 300 you know 180 degree opposite of what abyss is and everything abyss isn't so you know it was a challenge and once i started doing it i was like man i I can do this you know And and i'm so glad i did because it was able to show a little range and show that i could do more than just be the monster abyss and and i think it showed the world and the wrestling community that that i was more than just abyss and and i think it was one of the best career moves i ever made um you know it was a lot of fun man you know the steiner stuff was great uh the the bubba stuff you know the, the bully ray stuff was was without a doubt one of the best programs i've ever done in that company you know the it was the greatest arch rival, arch nemesis ever. You know, it was Superman to Lex Luthor with, with Bubba. And Bubba's so phenomenal on everything he does, on the microphone and so forth. It, it just really took off. And, uh, you know, it was just fantastic. I just, I, I love the character. You know, I, I'm with Tommy. This is always going to be number one by far. But, but, uh, but, I, but I always have a special place for Joseph Park, you know. Yeah, I love Joseph Park just because it showed another side. I I loved your facial expressions. I still use the Joseph Park facial expressions when my wife says something to me. I I, I wish people were watching this. I do the I do the Joseph Park, but uh, but that showed another side to you, and that that had to be a little unnerving. Like just removing that mask and you know kind of exposing yourself not only with a different character but having to use uh, facial expressions that maybe you didn't need to use before with the mask. Right. You know, I mean, it was stepping out, it was definitely stepping out of my comfort zone and, you know, cha- you know, every, very few people like change and wrestlers really don't like change. And, uh, you know, it was, it was, uh, it was a big challenge. I was very, very nervous about it. Um, uh, a lot of butterflies in the stomach, but I, you know, that, you know, that goes, if, if you turn those butterflies, you know, turn them the right way, they, they end up motivating you and driving. And that's what it did with me. And, um, you know, it was a great challenge, you know, like, to, like you just said, Dave, to do everything opposite of abyss, you know, to pick up a chair the wrong way, to step through the ropes and trip and, you know, the facials and so forth. And I, and I really credit the facials a lot to being under the mask for so long. You know, because I, I think I realized that my face was covered for so long that my facials were going to be such a, uh, you know, a big part of the character and, and so forth. So I, I really think having the mask on is what, what really helped, uh, you know, with, the, with the, the facials and the selling and the body language and so forth. Your uh, induction will be here in New York, uh, Bound for Glory. Uh, in a perfect world, who do you want to uh, induct you? You know, I've been thinking about it, and I've got, a, you know, there's a few names and so forth, and, and I, I know we're, we're going to announce it uh, probably here in a week or so uh, on who it's going to be, and I, I honestly don't know for sure yet. I know that, you know, obviously they're letting me have some input on it and so forth, uh, but but there's, you know, gosh, that that's a, it's a hard list to whittle down because there's so many people um, that I would put on that list 
that, uh, and Tommy, you being one of them, no doubt about that, you know, with our history and everything you've done for me, which we could sit here and talk for an hour about everything you've done for me over the, over the last 15 years or so that I've known you. And, um, you know, so there's a lot of people that, that definitely make that list and, uh, you know, we'll see, but, uh, you know, I'm really excited about it being in New York city, man, and, and you know, lower Manhattan, you know, the big apple, the heart of it all. Um, you know, I, I, I just can't believe we're, we're going to do it in New York city, you know, the, the biggest city in the world and in the, you know, the, the Mecca of the United States. I'm, I'm pretty excited about that. Yeah, we definitely would love for, you know, for you to come by the studio if you're going to be staying in New York City. Love to have you here in studio to do our show for sure because I, I kind of feel like Busted Open's been a part of the TNA history. We would go to those pay-per-views, you know, Lockdown, Bound for Glory out in Arizona Absolutely. And, and, and interviewing you so many times at those shows. And, you know, and looking back at this rich history, and you kind of touched on it at the beginning of the interview, but looking at your whole, and now we can call it a Hall of Fame career, you know, what was, you know, your favorite moment, your favorite match, and your favorite time with TNA? Oh, that's a great question, Dave. And, you know, I got I got easy answers for it. You know, my, my favorite match of all time would, would have to be 2005 lockdown, the very first lockdown versus AJ Styles. Um yeah, that's my favorite match um, in the in the history of my career. Um, it was the very first time that I ever main evented a pay per view. It was the first time that AJ or I had ever main main evented a Sunday live pay per view for the company. And uh, man, the pressure was on. You know, it was like okay, you know, we're. I remember the semi main event was a six man with Kevin Nash and Billy Gunn and X Pac and. Uh, I think Jeff was in it. Jeff Jarrett was in it. I can't remember. But I mean, there was, it was loaded. There was a lot of star power in it, and uh, and they decided to go ahead and put us on last. So so you know the, the pressure was on, and I thought we delivered. You know, without a doubt, I thought it was an incredible match. And uh, how can you not have an incredible match with AJ Styles? But but uh, we did. We tore it down, and and that was that's part of my favorite match. But but I've got others. You know, I mean, I, I always. Always love uh, Barbed Wire Massacre in 2006 with uh, with Sabu. You know the no ropes, all uh, all barbed wire wrapped ring. Um, that that was that was really a great moment as well. Um, you know, and then you know winning the winning the, the NWA TNA World Title uh, in 2007 from Sting uh, was was probably a, another memory that uh, that you know obviously I'll never forget. And it was a huge night of my career it was my only world title run with the company um so it was you know it was special to say the least awesome i mean I, i'm really looking forward to what's going on like you said here in new york city well deserved you know tna impact wrestling hall of fame you're going to be a huge part of it bound for glory weekend abyss it's been an absolute pleasure covering your career and i can't wait what the future holds for you as well thank you so much for the time today Hey, Dave, thank you, guys. Tommy, thank you so much. Uh, Tommy, I love you with all my heart. You know that. And, and Dave, thank you so much for for having me on, and thank you for the for the uh, congratulatory uh, words and stuff. I, I I could never tell you how tell you how much I appreciate it. You got it. Abyss, Hall of Famer, Tommy. Abyss. I'm Pretty have exciting. To him like that now. He's my favorite cookie monster, Hall of Famer, the monster Abyss. Now, whenever he signs an autograph, he's got to put that little HOF 18 next to it. His 8x10 just went up $5 now. <laughs> That's how we do it.